I'm not a dumb blonde, I'm just very good at pretending to be one. This video got me really curious because while most people would want to come across smart or intelligent, Paris Hilton decided to hide behind this dumb blonde character. So it got me thinking, and then I started to see a pattern. There was Karen Smith from Mean Girls, played by Amanda Seyfried. Then there was Ariana Grande's character, Kat Valentine, from the Nickelodeon show Victorious. Then there's Joey from Friends, and you guys know Friends would not have been as iconic without him. If we move out of the world of TV shows, we have Adam Sandler, who literally built his career on the back of playing these dumb but lovable characters. Who remembers Happy Gilmore and The Wedding Singer? Now, in the music industry, we also had Britney Spears, who said in her memoir that her team had deliberately marketed her as the eternal virgin, even though she lost her virginity at 14. So why did they do that? I mean, I don't believe in pitting women against each other, but if you were a 90s kid, you'll remember the whole Britney versus Christina saga. The difference in popularity shows you that there is something about the sweet and the innocent that people just like. Another duo that comes to mind is Anne and Mary Bolin from The Other Bolin Girl. Guess who gets away drama-free and who is beheaded by King Henry VIII? One more example I can think of is Vicky Christina Barcelona, again with Scarlett Johansson who plays the sweet and more agreeable character, while Penelope Cruz plays the feisty and melodramatic Christina. Guess which character the audience rooted for, and which character evoked more feelings of annoyance despite her strength and confidence. So yes, I agree that Paris Hilton hid behind the dumb blonde character because she was shy, like she said, but I also think she learned to use it to her advantage because as the rest of the world was making fun of her, Paris was winning. She was building an empire. Marilyn Monroe also used this to her advantage. She was the one who immortalized the dumb blonde character on the silver screen, despite being anything but stupid. And Marilyn is still, to this day, an icon and a muse to many. So maybe it actually takes a very smart and even wise person to play dumb. But why does the average person want to be perceived as clever? Why does it bother us so much when someone undermines our intelligence? The simple answer is ego. For the person with a healthy and balanced ego, it might not make them very happy to be perceived in a negative way, but it won't bother them as much as it would someone who doesn't have a healthy and balanced ego. The healthy person won't feel the need to people please or overcompensate by being a perfectionist. The person with an unbalanced ego will because they are acting from a place of fear and mainly a fear of rejection. These responses are trauma responses. Under fights, you have the angry outbursts and the controlling narcissistic behavior. Under flight, you have the workaholic, the overthinker who's gripped by anxiety and who might even joke around and say they have OCD. These are our perfectionists. Then under freeze, you have the people who will literally isolate themselves because they feel so numb and stuck in life that they can't even make decisions, so they choose to do nothing. And finally, under Fawn, we have the classic people pleaser, whose identity shifts depending on who they're with. They have no boundaries, which leads to them being easily overwhelmed. Ariana Grande seems to be living in this trauma response, but that's just my opinion. So where do these trauma responses come from? They come from inner child wounds that usually happen in childhood. There are four types of inner child wounds, the guilt wound, the trust wound, and the abandonment or neglect wound. Now, a lot of people might not know the difference between abandonment and neglect, but it's very important. Abandonment is usually when a parent walks out of a child's life completely. Neglect, on the other hand, is when the parent is still in the child's life, but neglects the child by not providing basic needs such as food, clothing, or emotional needs. It's essentially when the parent doesn't acknowledge the child's existence. And it's important to know the difference because some of my clients will struggle with their mental health, but 
don't understand why, because I had both my parents growing up and they gave me everything. But did they genuinely show interest in you? Did they ask you about your day? Do they know what hobbies you like? It's not enough to just feed and clothe a child. Now, going back to the inner child, how is that connected to the ego then? Well, the ego is the self, right? It's your sense of identity, your sense of self-esteem. The ego can be divided into three parts, the parent, adult, and child. The child or the inner child can then be divided into two parts, the adaptive child who makes emotional decisions based on past experiences and who is all about self-protection. And then there's the free child who is spontaneous and creative and lives in the moment. The adaptive child and the free child exist simultaneously within us, along with the parent and the adult. All these states make up our ego, but it's crucial to remember that there is no good or bad state. The idea is to balance and move freely amongst all these states. This is why they say to heal your ego, you need to first heal your inner child. When you heal the inner child, an irrational emotion or thought can come up, but you are able to control it because you know where it's coming from. Often with age and experience, you naturally balance out your ego states. Sometimes you have to make more of an effort by going to therapy, especially if you've been through childhood trauma. However you reach this state, the end result is the same. A clear sense of self and an understanding of one's own self-worth. And this is why people with high self-esteem are just not bothered by criticism, nor are they easily triggered. So to conclude, yes, it does take a very smart, wise and confident person to play dumb. But why should we have to play dumb? The short answer is because people don't like smart people. And truth be told, who's smart and who's stupid anyway? So to keep it simple without having a whole philosophical debate, let's just say that people don't like people who seem smart because it feels threatening to their sense of self-worth. Once you've made people feel lesser than, you've lost their vote. And you might think that you don't need their vote anyway. But the truth is, life is easier when you have more people on your side. Having both beauty and brains in real life is often about playing dumb, being agreeable, adaptable, and exercising a light-hearted sense of humor. When I healed my inner child, I became more tolerant and compassionate, but most of all, I became more mentally resilient. Criticism didn't bother me as much as it used to. I became okay with being misunderstood, and I no longer felt the need to correct people's perception of me. But with my healed inner child and a newfound sense of self-worth, I quickly realized that most people didn't want the best version of me, nor did they deserve it. You see, sometimes we are the problem, but sometimes other people are the problem. So what I did was I put the people in my life into two categories, my inner circle and my outer circle. Obviously, this isn't something new that I invented, but it works. So 20% of the people in my life would be my inner circle and 80% would be in my outer circle. Currently, my inner circle is made up of really close friends who feel like family and, of course, my actual family, but not all of them made it on this list. There are some family members who really make you wonder how you're related. My inner circle are the people who get the best version of me. I can be myself completely, speak my mind, and know that I won't be judged. I can tell them good news and know that they'll be happy for me. My outer circle, on the other hand, are colleagues acquaintances, and even friends who I might have known for a while but don't feel particularly connected to. These are the people who get the duller, dumber, dim-witted version of me because I'm personally a little superstitious and I don't want to attract the evil eye. Not to say that I have so much for people to be jealous of. Jealousy doesn't work that way. It could be anyone. As long as you have what another person wants, you're going to be the object of that person's jealousy. So I'm not anything special. But more than that, I just don't want to share too much of myself with my outer circle simply because 
they don't know me well and I just want my life to be easy. My motto is low key, low drama, high vibes. So here are some tips on how to play dumb effectively. Number one is to talk less, listen more and show interest. The best way to win someone over is to show them their own value by asking questions and showing genuine interest in who they are. You might even learn a thing or two. Number two is to be agreeable, most of the time. Share viewpoints that you know they'll agree with and try not to directly disagree with someone. If you happen to disagree with someone, just ask more questions like, oh really, why do you think that? Number three is to just be okay with being misunderstood. What matters most at the end of the day is how you feel about yourself and that you are a good person. Number four is to fight the need to win. Once you heal your inner child, you'll be okay with being misunderstood and naturally you won't feel the need to fight or correct people. And last but not least, use humor often, but never in a way that makes people feel they might be the butt of your joke or that you're mocking them. Self-deprecating humor works best. Keep it lighthearted and fun. It's not that deep.